Hey Film Buffs, welcome back to Film Feature 43. Today we're going to talk about Hawkeye. More specifically, we're going to talk about Hawkeye from the MCU. And more and more specifically, we're going to talk about the fact that I believe that his Disney Plus outing is better than any other Disney Plus show that we've gotten so far. Whenever I came up with this idea, I thought it was going to be a little bit more controversial because it's Hawkeye. A lot of people give a lot of hate to Hawkeye, but when I went to the all-knowing Rotten Tomatoes to kind of see where critics and fans kind of fell on this topic, it seemed like a lot of people agree with me. Whether you're talking about critics or fans, there seems to kind of be a consensus with the five shows that we've gotten so far, not counting Moon Knight, that it kind of spreads the same way. You have Falcon and Winter Soldier on the lower end, Loki and Hawkeye are kind of tied for second place, and then you have What If above the rest. Um, I don't really agree with that. I actually think Hawkeye is better than What If, but there's a reason for that, so let's get into it. The main thing that I think Hawkeye has that the other Disney Plus shows don't have is consistency. If you take WandaVision, for instance, there's a lot of tonal shifts throughout the first couple episodes, which are the best episodes of the season, but the tonal shifts are built in to be kind of quirky and to make it really appeal to the sense of nostalgia you have for the older sitcoms that it's parody. Well, I think we handled that well. But that's the whole point of the show is to parody those sitcoms and kind of give us that nostalgic feeling. They really drop the ball in the last episode though. Throughout the season we got hits of nostalgia from all these different shows that we remember watching growing up, uh, even older people can remember the I Love Lucy era, and we got introduced to people like an adult Monica Rambeau, who I think would be a good stand-in for some heroes in the future that want to step away, and we got a good villain in Agatha Harkness played really well by Katherine Hahn, but we got to the last episode, and it kind of all fell apart. They ditched the format of having it take place in this fantastical world, which you kind of had to pull it out somehow, but the way they did it, I think, is too much of a tonal shift from what the rest of the show was to really be able to enjoy the final episode. In the last episode, we got a lot of the same versus same CGI fighting that we've seen numerous times in Iron Man or Black Panther or Ant-Man, so that really didn't bring anything new to the table and it really dropped the ball on what we've seen before. Falcon and the Winter Soldier likewise at the start was very good. It had some of the elements of the buddy cop uh, throwing off of each other that we were promised in the trailers. So we're partners, co-workers, not necessarily a team. No. But it quickly turned into the Falcon show, which is fine. I have no problem with it. I don't think a lot of people would have an issue with the Sam Wilson Captain America having his own show and kind of being the main star. But as far as the advertising went, that wasn't what we were promised. And it really took a tonal shift halfway through. Overall, it was a darker show or a heavier show that is trying to focus on issues of race or issues of taking up the mantle of somebody who is held on a pedestal but it never really pulls the trigger on any of its one theme over another having heavier storylines in tv show and movies is a great thing and it can help people heal wounds um, by being able to connect on a tv show or movie but this show never really gave any solutions in world or in the real world that you can kind of draw a lesson from. You've got to do better, Senator. You've got to step up. I think it kind of struggled from a little bit of mixed tonal shifts where you had some of the quippier MCU stuff trying to be mixed in with these heavier tones. We look damn good, though. And I don't think it was done as well as it could have been. And I feel like there was a lot of stuff cut from this due to Corona or whatever that really hindered it from being as good as it could have been. I think Loki kind of falls in the same ruts as WandaVision did, where it has this fantastical idea and you have these shifts, not so much in tone, but in ideas as you go throughout, whether it be free will or being stood over by an authority figure. And by the end, at least in my opinion, I felt like it dropped the ball in finishing it up. The last episode to me, really felt like an exposition dump to say, hey, this is what's really going on, and more so pointing to the future of the MCU and what's to come, then it really spent time 
tying up loose ends in the show that we're watching. A variant of myself lived on Earth in the 31st century. He was a scientist, and he discovered that there were universes stacked on top of his own. It gave us a name of Kang to be excited about, and that's pretty much it. I love the buildup that we got, but it really felt like they're just leaving the door open for a season two for the sake of doing that and opening up the multiverse for everybody else, but they never tied up what they were trying to do in the season itself. But it did introduce Owen Wilson to the MCU. Big metaphor guy. I love it. Makes you sound super smart. I am smart. I know. And the multiverse splitting apart and being the first time that we saw that was really cool in the last episode, so maybe I can overlook some of its flaws. And where I can't stay mad at Loki, I feel like I definitely can stay mad at What If, even though that the fans' reviews seem to say that this is the best show in the MCU, I didn't feel that way. You see, dear viewer, the What If TV show was my most anticipated show of the whole slate that they announced, because growing up, I had a lot of the What If comics, and I loved the way they were able to tell different stories just by one small change. Something completely different in the universe could happen. And I think for that reason is why I don't like the show as much as a lot of people do. I put it on this high pedestal that I should have never put it on, and it just didn't live up to my expectations. It kind of was a jumble mess of the ideas that they wanted to do, and things that they had time for, and how they brought it all together at the end to kind of be one big battle, so all the episodes kind of intertwined with each other. I don't like how it was executed and I feel like they cut out a lot of stuff that should have been in so we understood it better in the final episode. But like I said, I put it on this high pedestal and it never probably was ever going to reach the limits of what I wanted it to be. So that's partially on me and apparently I'm alone in thinking this because everybody really seems to love What If. So that's just my opinion. But it was visually stunning and there were moments in it that I did really enjoy. The Thor episode, I think, in general, was probably my favorite. I might be alone in that as well. But I just thought it was kind of Looney Tooney and just goofy enough for me to enjoy the whole time. And besides Hawkeye, the only other MCU show that's on Disney Plus right now is Moon Knight. And it does have higher ratings and everything else, but it's not done with its run yet. So to me, that's kind of like rating a movie an hour into it just doesn't really make sense. Now finally we made it to Hawkeye and I believe that one reason why I do like it so much is my expectations were here where my expectations for everything else was here and all the shows could all be on the same playing field but the fact that I didn't really expect anything out of this show because it's a show about Hawkeye I think that really elevated it past me liking it more than any of the other MCU outings. The rest of the MCU shows are kind of like reaching into a box of cookies and pulling out one thinking it's chocolate chip and you bite into it and it's raisin. Although Hawkeye's kind of the opposite. It's like reaching into a box thinking they're all raisin and biting into one finding a chocolate chip. Raisin cookies are fine, but when you have your expectations set on a chocolate chip cookie, it really kind of lowers your experience of eating that cookie or watching that show in this case. So that is probably the main reason why I think it's the best show, but it's not the only reason. I believe Hawkeye is everything an MCU show is supposed to be. It pulls from the past with Elena looking for her sister and being blipped back into existence, and Kate watching the invasion of New York, but it also alludes to the future with Kingpin and setting up new Black Widows and new Hawkeyes to take up the mantles of characters that we've known and loved but have come and gone. So it puts all of the aspects of looking to the past, but also looking to the future in one show. All in all, one thing that I think Hawkeye gets to do that the other shows don't get to is have more fun. It's not dealing with world-changing events like Loki and WandaVision where the multiverse is splitting apart because of those shows, and it's not dealing with race and class and people being displaced by the snap like Falcon and the Winter Soldier is doing, and even What If is still on that level of, hey, there's different universes out there, let's kind of take a peek into them. Hawkeye's not doing that. Hawkeye can be separate from the rest of the MCU while still being in the MCU 
because it's not telling a world-changing story. And that is the type of story I like to see from time to time. If Thanos is getting kicked in the head every other day, or Kang is running around changing the timeline, and it's an Avengers-level threat every single story, it kind of loses its specialness, if that makes sense. It's not really as special when every other day a celestial head's going to pop out of the ground and kill all of humanity and somebody needs to stop it. It needs to be more small scale so we can care about the bigger scale stories when we get them. To me, Hawkeye feels like a Shane Black movie. You have the Christmas, you have the action, you have the comedy, all mixed together. And it came together really well, in my opinion. But is it perfect? No. It had a little too much of the Marvel quippiness. Kate, where's our backup? that MCU really falls on from time to time. <laughs> We're all gonna die. And it introduced us to Rogers the Musical, which should be a capital punishment in and of itself. But it did grow the characters of Clint and Yelena from what we've already seen them in. And it introduced us to Kate Bishop, who's probably gonna be a big, more down-to-earth superhero fighting people like Kingpin or teaming up with the Young Avengers taking on smaller threats. To come, she's going to be a big part of the MCU and introducing her in this show, I think, was really important because she's going to take the role of Hawkeye eventually and we're going to get a different Hawkeye than what we've had. She's more open and the way they introduced her in the show to kind of bounce off Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye is really smart and we got a more comic accurate Hawkeye with the trick arrows and kind of his just callousness that a lot of fans, if they exist, of Hawkeye from the comics really like. It did a lot more character growth than all five of the movies that Hawkeye's been in to date. So all in all, I think it just hit the mark everywhere that I want it to. But that's my opinion. Let me know down below, guys. What do you think? What's your favorite Disney Plus MCU show? Leave it down below, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.